Hi all of you wonderful scuba divers out there, welcome to Scuba Dive Magazine and welcome to Ask Mark which is my weekly scuba diving Q&A. Uh, I'm Mark, former dive instructor and whilst I don't teach anymore, uh, I do like to answer your questions uh, on scuba diving as much just to help you guys and girls out there. Um, if you do have any questions, pop them down in the comments below so I can find them uh, and if you use that Ask Mark hashtag, this one just here, uh, to get featured in the next Q&A. This week I'm answering questions about tank valves, uh, my scuba diving history, uh, mix Mixing regulator brands, uh, twin hose regulators, investing in your own equipment, and clean air nitrox. Let's dive straight in with the first question. Which this week comes from Paul Tyler, and they say, Hi Mark, great video as always, thank you. Uh, for a future video, could you please clarify the way to use the cylinder valve? I was taught on my open water course that the cylinder should be fully opened and then turned back a half turn. I've since learned that the cylinder valve should be opened fully without turning it back, Dan website. Um, Diving recently in Egypt, everyone was still turning the valves back a half turn. Could you clarify which technique is correct and tell us why, please? Thanks in advance. I sure can. Yeah, um, so I actually used to teach this because it's how I was taught. It was how I was taught to taught, taught to teach. So, um, and yeah, I think it's, uh, it mainly came from, I think there was a, a Dan article um, probably a good year or two ago now. And and they basically found that there were some incidents where that quarter turn or half turn, um, yeah, this one's empty, um, that half turn rule, it, it got people confused and I think some people did get hurt. So the current recommendation is the fully open. So the correct way to do it is of course, attach your regulator onto your cylinder valve and then actually hold down the purge button whilst you slowly open the valve just a little bit you'll hear the hiss. As soon as you hear the hiss, then you let go of the purge button and you'll hear your regulator charge up. And then whilst you're still like ready on that purge button, just in case you need to, um, as long as it charges up and everything's fine, there's no air leaking or anything, then open up that cylinder valve all the way uh, just finger tight very loosely. Uh, it doesn't have to be <clears throat> wrenched open because you can damage parts on the inside. Um, and that's it. The main thing was is that when there's that like half turn back, if you go to like then find the valve, there's that like ambiguity and some people forget the like lefty loosey righty tighty or if it's a left hand valve, of course it's the opposite thread. So someone could, if they're trying to be helpful, they'll go, oh, oh, I don't know if that valve is open. They could come to it and actually end up closing your valve and then opening it up a half turn. So then the valve is a little bit open. It's enough to draw gas from your cylinder. However, because it's still got a restriction in it, it can actually cause choke points. So it can mean that you can breathe from it quite normally. And if you're not actually looking at your pressure gauge, then you will just jump in the water with a very slightly open um, sort of tank valve and you'll be able to draw some gas. But if you need to really get a lot of gas, you won't be able to get enough through that restriction. So that's where some people got in trouble. And whenever you're doing your uh, your pre-dive safety check right before you get in the water, one of the last things that I do is I look at my pressure gauge and I do breathe from my second stage. And if that needle moves at all, then you know that that cylinder valve isn't open all the way or at least enough. If it moves when you're inhaling, then yeah, that, that valve isn't open enough. But current guidelines are to open it all the way up until it stops and that's it, you're ready to go diving. Gennaro Faneo says, uh, you mentioned former instructor, uh, why don't you teach anymore? Uh, yeah, I don't teach anymore, um, I used to. I did a few seasons um, teaching and there was no incident or anything that you need to worry about. Um, it, it was really, I kind of reached a bit of a plateau in my career. Uh, I never really in, intended on becoming a dive instructor. Um, for me, when I was getting into scuba diving, it was like dive master. I kind of looked at that skill tree type thing and I was like, yeah, dive master, that, that seems like a nice, um, like a nice, target to uh, to reach something that I can do professionally um, but I didn't really want the responsibility of uh, like being an instructor and then when I was actually a, a dive master at a, um, a teaching dive center I found it a bit restrictive so I was like you know what I'm going to do my instructor 
so I can get signed off. And then after that, I taught, I loved it. I do love teaching, um, but I didn't feel like staff instructor or like course director was for me. I really, yeah, that didn't interest me. And, and at the dive center, I just felt like I kind of reached that plateau, that ceiling. And, um, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna look elsewhere. So quit my job, um, which my parents loved the, uh, the concept of that. I think because my sister and I both quit our jobs about the same time. Um, and, um, and yeah, I, I, I basically found by sheer luck the, uh, the job position at, uh, at Simply Scuba. And I was looking through the, uh, the job listing, I was like, well, I can do that. That would be quite interesting. I've heard of Simply Scuba. Um, so I went for that. Had no idea that I was going to get into uh, into videos. That was just like during the interview process. They were like, oh, and also, would you be willing to do like the odd video? I was like, yeah, I suppose, if you think I'm pretty enough. Um, and um, and I started off that, got into uh, into videos, and that ended up becoming more of what I did instead of the uh, like managerial role that I was hired to do. And um, and yeah, here I am now. And it was more like relocating. Um, so I relocated for that position and left behind a lot of the, uh, the dive team that I was uh, that I was diving with. And Simply Scuba wasn't a teaching dive centre, so I didn't end up teaching. Um, I did keep up my um, uh, instructor ticket because you have to pay every year to uh, to keep in status. And I, I think I did for like the first year. After that, I was like, it's not really worth it because um, it's fairly expensive and I imagine it's gone up since. Um, and um, and yeah, that's it. So um, yeah, I, I used to teach, um, but, um, but now I, I teach you wonderful people on the internet. William Tahon says, uh, what are the technical reasons why, um, uh, why brands cannot be mixed? What problems could occur when using other brand octos? Um, so yeah, if you have a, a regulator, it mainly comes down to, there are some brands where it's quite tricky to, um, to mix um, uh, like regulator component parts. Um, with gauges and low pressure inflator hoses, nine times out of 10, it's perfectly fine. Um, you can mix brands with, um, uh, with your gauges and your low pressure inflator hoses. It's when it comes to second stages, because your first stage, um, your first stage basically takes the, say, 300 bar of pressure from your cylinder, and there's usually a big old spring inside of that that steps it down from 300 bar down to about eight or nine. Um, and that's what it's kicking out of the, um, the low pressure hoses that we call the interstage pressure. It's in between the first and the second stage. So some brands, uh, as I said, will have it as like uh, nine bar, let's say. Others will have it at eight bar. Um, others will have it a little bit higher. So it's, it's a little bit of a balancing act and they're not always the same. Then with your second stage, your second stage has another spring, which is basically pushing the air that's trying to push its way in from the hose. If that spring is a little bit softer, or a little bit harder. Um, if it's softer and you have a, a relatively high interstage pressure, then the second stage is just gonna leak. You do just need to adjust the, uh, the tension on that spring, basically. Um, the other side of it, if the interstage pressure is quite low and you have a relatively hard spring in your second stage, then you won't be able to inhale through that. So there's, there's a chance, but most of that is just down to tweaking of the, uh, the first stage and the, uh, and the second stage, that combination. Um, the, the main downside to, uh, to mixing regulator brands is in like servicing. So if you have two brands and, or on your regulators, you take your set of regulators to your service center and say, oh, could you service my regulators, please? Um, they might be able to service one brand, but they might not be able to service the other. It, it's not a, free for all you have to have an actual account with that um, uh, with that brand you have to have a, uh, a qualified service technician of course you have to have the, uh, the service kits so 
chances are they might not be able to service that so you have to disconnect it and then take your regulators to one dive center and then just send your octo to another dive center and that's just a hassle um, some um service centers especially the one that i worked at if you did have this like chimera of a regulator with two or three different brands in it then they would service the individual parts they pull it apart they clean it they'd uh, replace the parts that are required but they wouldn't reassemble it completely they'd reassemble the individual components but they wouldn't attach the hoses again um, and that just means that when you go to first use them it's kind of a, um, a flip of the coin whether it's going to like leak um, and need to be adjusted a little bit because uh, that's usually included in the uh, in the service. But if they're not reattached, then they can't like readjust them. You can do it yourself if you've got an inline adjuster, but that's just an additional hassle for you. Um, it might void some like warranties. And, uh, and guarantees and all that kind of stuff because the brands spend a lot of time and a lot of money um, getting particular regulator configurations um, like ANSTE tested and, uh, and CE certified and it's done with an Octo as well. So if you're using a third party Octo then the the manufacturer can kind of step back and uh, if you're trying to claim on the warranty or something and say well hang on you were using it with this um, this Octo, uh, we never tested it. Um, that means that you know, it's not really our problem. So there's a chance that that could happen. Um, but mechanically, not so much of an issue. You might just need a bit of tweaking um, because different brands use different like interstage pressures. Mojo Stone or Moho Stone, depending on where you're from, uh, says, what is your opinion of Kraken double hose regulator? I've not dove with a double hose regulator since the 60s. Uh, it appears the Kraken has overcome the shortcomings of the earlier double hose regulators. Yeah, I, I love the vintage like twin hose uh, design regulators. Um, Kraken are definitely up there. They, um, I think they they might still be having issues um, after COVID. A lot of their like uh, the manufacturers who made individual components um, are still closed. So I think I read somewhere they were still having trouble to um, uh, to get hold of parts to build new regulators. So if you do see one uh, for sale, that's complete and in full working order. Go for it. Um, I think Aqualung did one. I don't know if they still make it. I want to say the Mistral. Uh, which was a twin hose design. Uh, I think it's quite good for um, uh, photographers. Photographers and videographers quite like them because most of the bubbles, if it's open circuit, are behind you. Um, you, of course, you see them on uh, on rebreathers. They're, they're all, well, they all tend to have um, slight twin hoses. Um, so um, yeah, yeah, no, I, I do like them and uh, and Kraken. From what I've seen, are a reputable brand. Um, yeah, I'd love to get my hands on one and actually like try it out. I don't think it's quite as simple to uh, to use as a, um, uh, a modern second stage, which are pretty bulletproof, but you've got experience in uh, so like how to deal with twin hose regulators. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm all for them. I, I do like that kind of retro stuff. And um, the, there are certain diving circles. Um, I mean, if you look at um, Alec Pierce's channel, um, I think he did one straight probably a while back now uh, where it was like a, a sea hunt um, recreation uh group they all got together and they were like recording and filming in in black and white they've all got these twin hose regulators and stuff uh, it was fantastic to watch but yeah I'm, I'm all for it matthew asks how long should i wait before investing in a bcd and kit i'm going on my 20th dive soon and will be getting my advanced open water cert but i'm still unfamiliar with so many different styles of gear it's hard to know if i should just keep what my dive shop rents me yeah, so these are the tricky bit of the earlier you invest in gear, the greater your chances of investing in something that two or three years down the road you, you don't really like anymore, if that makes sense. I mean, if I think back to the, the things that I was buying when I first started diving, you're like, Ugh, why on earth did you buy that? Um, the important thing is is to try and think where you're going to be in like three to five years time or something. What are your aspirations of, um, of becoming as a scuba diver? If you want to go down to twin sets um, or like rebreathers and side mouths especially, then you, you really need to uh, sort of have that, that sort of 
internal monologue and, and decide yeah what what you want to be or if you just want to be like a nomadic um, like traveling scuba diver uh, then that can help you really like cut things out and you can really focus on what's what's really important have that like mindset in uh, sort of what what type of scuba diver you uh, you want to become and then have that conversation with your dive center or your instructor and um, just just kind of say hey um I'm early on, um, so I probably won't be investing in dive equipment right here and now, but I'd like your advice just to, because as dive centers and um, instructors, we love talking about equipment. So uh, yeah, we're quite happy, as long as we're not busy, obviously. Um, and yeah, that, that would just sort of help help guide them, guide you in that, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about doing this and I'd like to uh, sort of go over here. Um, should I start investing in, uh, in sort of like this? And they can, they can point you in certain directions, but then again, have a look around online because some dive centers, of course, they're going to push what brands they sell. There might be uh, more suitable brands out there. Um, I think Reddit is quite good. Um, from the recommendations that I see on Reddit, most of them are pretty uh, like above board and um, for, for what people are asking for they get sensible results um, and yeah have, have a good look around look at the pros and cons but yeah scuba diving equipment a lot of it some of it is like all-rounders um, but it's that like master of none uh, if you really want to specialize in one thing in particular then it's worth going down that one particular route 20 dives yeah, yeah, you can start investing in um, at least the basics from your like mask and fins if you don't have them already. Um, your dive computer, dive computer is quite important. Um, your regulators after that, then your BCD. BCD is usually quite low on my list because it's just a bag of air. You can kind of dive with anything for a bit, but once you really start to get down the um, like serious scuba diver route, it's really nice to have your own. Um, so then, yeah, you really want to decide what style of scuba diver you want to become. Um, definitely before rescue, um, it's quite nice to have your own equipment. Um, but yeah, ha have that good chat with your instructor, have that internal monologue of, you know, what type of scuba diver you want to become. Uh, and then that can help you cross a lot of those, uh, those stars off the list. And finally, William Sweet says, what's your thoughts on the whole clean air nitrox Andy? Uh, seems like a scam. Uh, so Andy is the, uh, the American Nitrox Divers International, I believe, uh, which to me always seemed a bit like a contradiction in terms. Um, it's the American International thing, but I suppose the Americans have their, um, their World Series of Baseball where only America plays. Um, but anyway, so Andy brought out clean was it clean air nitrox or clean nitrox it was um it was like the late 80s early 90s and back then back in like the i believe 70s and 80s nitrox i think some called it like the devil's gas it was seen as quite a almost dangerous thing uh, i think that was mainly down to the um uh what you call it like oxygen toxicity uh, i'm sure someone like alec pierce is going to correct me down in the uh, in the comments below but um yeah, it was, they, they basically wanted to, to turn it around and um, and get people onto nitrox because as we all know now, nitrox is a, a safe gas uh, as long as you stay above your MOD. And um, and yeah, they, they brought out, so their, their clean air or clean air nitrox, I forget what it's called now, is um, is basically from the, the oxygen manufacturer to your second stage, everything, every single like piece of equipment is oxygen cleaned and uh, and tested the um the technicians and the the users are doing things correctly and they're testing things as they go they're not like cutting corners or anything um so yeah it is very important because too many divers just grab a cylinder and they're like yeah strap it on and go for the dive um without like analyzing it or testing it um with compressors I've changed plenty of compressor um, uh, filters in my time. And if you saw how just grimy and horrible the uh, the filters can get after a while of, uh, of compressing gas, yeah, it is, it's really important to get like decent. I mean, would you like have to do the entire course and do all that? 
Probably not, uh, depending on it. It really depends how much you use um, like pure oxygen and, uh, and mixing gases. Um, I mean, there's, I think one of the main bugbears is the grade of air because you get different grades, uh, like qualities of air. I believe the most basic is E, I wanna say, for uh, for scuba or at least uh, SCBA. Um, and, and that's for how much like hydrocarbons and moisture is allowed into the, uh, the cylinder for it to be classified as class E. I think the best is N, I believe. Could have changed, I could be completely wrong. This is all from memory. Um, but yeah, you're really aiming for that, like zero hydrocarbon, uh, zero moisture. So you want as like minimum contaminants as possible. And yeah, it's better for your cylinders. It's better for your lungs. Um, so yeah, it, it is good. And I feel like I did, uh, I mean, the way I learned to um, to fill up cylinders, we used um, uh, partial pressure blending uh, as sort a of pure oxygen uh, and mixing that with uh, with compressed gas or compressed air. And um, and the the guys that I learned from, they uh, I mean, dive line medical. They build hyperbaric chambers that are used for multiple sclerosis and all that kind of stuff. So they know pure oxygen and pressure systems. So. I was taught by them and um, and I feel like I, I had that kind of informal um, like training but um, yeah it, it is important to make sure that all of your um, all of the gas that ends up in your cylinders is top notch or at least as good as you can get hold of cylinders are all marked up properly so that in the water you are breathing exactly what you're breathing and you're entering that information into your dive computer accurately you're not just uh, yeah i think the cylinder has 30 percent in it yeah sure go on then and you type that into your computer uh yeah it is quite important to get the um the correct gas mix and the correct gas in your cylinder and that's it for another week um good questions as ever um yeah andy i've, I've not heard andy in a while um and um yeah it, it is important to uh, to get the, the correct gas mix. There, there have been some dreadful mix-ups. Um, but yeah, uh, what do you think about Andy? Um, I presume they like, they, um, they like being called Andy, it's not A-N-D-I. Um, I don't know, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, if you dive twin hose regulators, uh, by all means, pop that down in the, uh, the comments below. What do you use? Um, Kraken, are Kraken still manufacturing regulators? I think I saw in a social media post somewhere that they, um, uh, they couldn't get hold of certain parts and they weren't going to start like getting new manufacturers to uh, to get the parts they're just waiting for them to like be resurrected after uh, lockdown uh, but that could have changed by all means let us know down in the comments below and if you've got any questions about scuba diving scuba diving equipment um sort of the procedures like the, uh, the cylinder tank valve uh, by all means pop them down in the uh, in the comments below if you've got any questions that you want me to personally answer and elaborate on um use that ask mark hashtag uh, like share subscribe do all that social media stuff uh, follow the channel as well and uh, and check out our other social media channels thank you for watching everybody and of course safe diving